Um, hi, I'm Randy at the Customs House Museum, and uh, I'm the preparator here. Uh, we, we, I help uh, the curator install exhibits at the museum. Uh, helped install a lot of the items you see around there in the sports exhibit, uh, also down in the lane and uh, other places in the museum. Uh, with my helper Bill, we installed this uh, rock climber, uh, Ben Clark, the mountain climber, climbed Mount Everest. And uh, he was one of the uh, youngest mountain climbers he ever climbed. He, he, he was over there. Almost a record, but his friend, his best friend, beat him by, by two days. So he, he was trying to be the youngest mountain climber. And uh, of course, if there's a time limit on that, if you don't do it at a certain time, you can't be it. He didn't make it. But uh, uh, his friend was like just a few days younger than him, and he beat him by a few days. Um, and now um, we have a display of his artifacts here on the wall, uh, actual, actual tools that he used to climb Mount Everest. Uh, the uniform that's on the mannequin and also in the backpack are actually uniforms and equipment that he took up on Mount Everest. Uh, the, the rock that we, you have here is a foam cut rock. It's, you just need a hot wire foam cutter and uh, form the rock and the ice cube, uh, the icicles rather. And, uh, but everything on him is authentic. Uh, this is one of the favorite spots where children like to come here and watch the man climb and, or say goodbye to the man as they leave the museum. But, but uh, it's one of, the, one of the fun things I do here to put in the exhibits like this. Uh, Bill uh, helps me. Uh, as, uh, did I mention he's been here for 18 years? Uh, he helps uh, three days a week. And uh, you can find out more about him on CE Light Band. The, uh, Randy Spurgeon uh, uh, interview, and he's, he's got him in there. And, uh, <laughs> um, we also put in uh, we put in the boards here for the uh, uh, for the sports exhibit. Um, if you notice the race car, uh, all the cutout figures are. Like the backs, my like backs, um, set up in cutouts for the uh, crew. And, uh, but, uh, <laughs> I'm running out of stuff. Welcome to Kids in the Kitchen with Parks and Rec. I'm Penny Green, the Assistant Manager at the Burke Cobb Rec Center. And today I have my daughter Casey with me. Hello. Today we are going to make breakfast sushi. Sounds interesting, I know, but believe me, it's going to be really yummy. For this snack, you are going to need bananas, some sort of spread, and your favorite breakfast cereal. The first thing you're going to need to do is get your favorite breakfast cereal, and Casey's going to show you the first step. You're gonna take, we've got Fruit Loops, and Casey's gonna use the bottom of our spread and I'm gonna crunch use the it up. bottom of the peanut butter jar and I'm gonna gather some of the Fruit Loops up and I'm just gonna, you just take it and push down. If you have something like Fruity Pebbles that's kinda small, it would, you probably wouldn't need to smush it up. But we Fruit Loops, we're gonna need to. So while she continues to do that, I'm gonna show you the next step. You're gonna take your banana, you're gonna peel it, and then I chose- <laughs> That looks very appealing. Uh-huh, <laughs> no pun intended. I'm gonna use um, mixed berry cream cheese, and then you were just going to spread it. Something like this project would probably, that's probably a good case. Okay. Probably ages two and up. Um, Are you going to use peanut butter or cream cheese? I'm going to use peanut butter. Okay, so then what you are going to do, you want to put the, the cereal in the middle. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to kind of cut mine in half to make it easier. You're just going to spread, you 
whatever you choose all over it, and then you're going to roll it in the cereal like such. And then you're going to cut it in little slices. would be really fun with this is if you had multiple kids doing this maybe with multiple kinds of spreads and multiple um, kinds of cereals it, it could be like a really fun um, you can make a platter like a platter or how fun would that be for um, a slumber party or if you're having a party at school oh that would be really nice be a nice way to accommodate different um, taste buds and palates. And also allergens. Oh, good, good point. Okay, let me get my last half done. Okay, I'm just gonna get a little bit more peanut butter on here and I think I'll be ready. To make this a little healthier, you could use granola. Ooh, that sounds good. Sounds good? You know, you, like I said, you could use cream cheese, peanut butter, Nutella. As uh, you can see, it does get a little messy with your spread in the cereal, but easy to clean off. <laughs> you wanna go ahead and cut yours into a little sushi slice? Yes, ma'am. Kids in the Kitchen with Parks and Rec. Bye, guys. Mmm, so good. All right, Tracy Mason Blair, uh, Clarksville Parks and Rec here at Birdcop Recreation Center with staff from Crow Center and Cleveland Center. Today, we're going to play a game called Bottle Knockdown. This game right here goes along with our six week uh, of the summer program with We're on a Roll. We're going to be rolling the ball. All you need is an empty bottle and some type of ball. Doesn't matter what type of ball you have. When you play this game, you're gonna be rolling the ball, trying to knock somebody's bottle down. But you have to be careful so that you don't knock your own bottle down. If your bottle gets knocked down, you have to do a certain exercise. So the first time we play, we're gonna do five jumping jacks if your bottle gets knocked down. The second time we play, once my whistle blows, we're gonna run a lap around the four cones that you see behind me. That's how you play the game bottle knockdown. So we're gonna start right here. Everybody has a bottle and there's balls spread out on the floor. When I say go, you can get a ball, but you have to be back on your spot when you roll it. So if your bottle gets knocked down by yourself or someone else, five jumping jacks, pick up your, pick up your bottle first, do your five jumping jacks, and then you can start playing the game again. All right, so we're gonna demonstrate right here. All right, so are you ready? Yeah. And go.
Kids in the Kitchen with Parks and Rec. My name is Penny Green and I'm the Assistant Manager at the Burt Cobb Rec Center. Today we are going to be making peanut butter and jelly sushi. In the event that you do have nut allergies, you can always substitute the peanut butter with a different kind of spread. For this recipe, you will need bread, some kind of jelly, and some kind of spread. The first thing we're going to need to do is take and roll the bread. Pretty simple. I'm using a rolling pin. If you don't have one at your disposal, you can use a can, a two liter bottle, or anything round that would allow for you to roll. Next thing you're going to do is take the jelly and spread. I'm using blackberry preserves. Just because I kind I have the preference and I like the seeds. And then my daughter Casey, who's generally my co-star, when she does this and she makes this with me, she likes to take the peanut butter and jelly and mix it together in a bowl. the peanut butter, layer that on there, get that nice and good, get some more peanut butter, this recipe is typically, I'm going to say ages two and up. Um, they should be able to do the spreading, the stirring, the rolling might be a little bit difficult for them. Um, so that might need some assistance from an adult. I rolled really good. So once you get the toppings on there, you are going to simply roll. I like to give it a little pinch at the end to seal it. I'm going to 
use a sharper knife to make my little cuts. This is a recipe where you could have cut the crusts off if you like. I find that it really doesn't make a difference to me. I like it either way. And there you have it. Peanut butter and jelly sushi. I hope you guys really enjoy these Kids in the Kitchen segments. Enjoy. We'll see you next time. Casey, and today on Storytime, I'm going to be reading you Dino Basketball. Here come herds of frenzied fans. March Madness reigns in Dino Land. Fill the stands around the court for Dino Hoops, the favorite sport. The Grass Clippers are the team to beat. The underdogs are called the meat. Grassy pom-poms swish and sway. The cheerleaders are pumped today. Players take the court by storm. Each wears a shiny uniform. Jersey, shorts, in sneaker feet. Green as clippers, red as meat. It's the tip off center court. Twix the players, ref looks short. He holds the ball, throws it high. Diplo barely has to try. A well-placed tap, it's Clippers ball. Cheers resound off of every wall. The game begins at breakneck speed. Two points for Stego, Clippers lead. Allo answers off the dribble. Diplo takes it up the middle. T-Rex charges from behind, steal the ball. It's meaty time. He drives the ball up to the hoop. Lobs to Raptor, alley-oop. Outside the baseline, Stego throws. It pounces in near Patchy's toes. Patchy's down the court so fast, scans her teammates, needs to pass. There's Tricera on the spot. Allosaurus blocks the shot. Then Pterodactyl number one cuts in on a zigzag run. Stego takes the charge down low. A meaty foul, two whistles blow. Tarot number one is through. In comes Taro number two. Apotosaurus dribble stops, dishes to Triceratops. Triceratops is trapped, breaks loose, he leaps, he scores! An easy deuce, dribble, pivot, jump release, two by two, the points increase! To know who wins, halftime's here. The show begins. Music, mask up, whoops and roars. A pyramid of dinosaurs. Fans wave banners, stop their feet, clapping out a rock and beat. We will, we will chomp you, roar! Halftime's over, fans are wild. Chanting, cheering, teams get riled. Compy doesn't need to stoop, weaves their legs right towards the hoop. A vicious slash, he's at the net, swish! The game's not over yet. Jabbing elbows, gruesome growls, traveling, tending, flagrant fouls. A red team foul can only mean it's a free throw for the green. Behind the foul line, Patchy aims, two shots, two points, back to the game. The Clippers team is in control, Lasso takes it to the hole. The little guy goes for the dunk, he hits the rim, his hopes are sunk. Clunk! The Clippers coach demands a win, Lasso's out, Jabaria's in. Back and forth, fourth and back, trusty scoreboard keeping track. On the sideline, coaches pace, determined scowls upon each face. Dino TV camera pans, zooms in on some famous fans. 
Though they wear a lame disguise, everybody knows these guys. Sego takes a shot denied. The ball is back on the run team side. Pivot left and face right. Raptor sees no meat in sight. Pass it, Yellen Mrs. says. She blocked, she's blocked by Diplo's massive size. So Raptor takes an outside shot. And Fuego, ouch, the meat is hot. Then Joe Bard takes it to the hole. Fans are breathless, lose control. Clock is ticking, score is tied. But meat has talent on its side. T-Rex passes, galley fakes, shoots the ball with no mistakes. She made the shot, the points are sweet. Red teams win, our champs, the meat. Sneakers squeak on wooden floors, the court is stormed by dinosaurs. Owl holds the trophy high, the red fans cheer, the coaches cry. They celebrate down the net, this was their finest season yet. The end is here, but you can bet. Tickets go on sale at noon. Tino football is coming soon. Okay, I hope you liked the story. Dino basketball. Have a good day, guys. Bye. Welcome to the Craft Corner with Parks and Rec. I'm Penny Green, the Assistant Manager at the Burke Cobb Rec Center. And today, we are gonna make no-sew t-shirt totes. For this project, you need two supplies. You're gonna need an old t-shirt and a pair of scissors. Because we're using scissors, I would definitely recommend we're looking at ages five on up. And if we're working with the younger kids, I would, I would make certain that they had the rounded scissors and as always, adult supervision is recommended. To do this quick project, you are going to simply follow the seam on the sleeve of the shirt and cut it off. There's one. You're going to just repeat that and do it on the next arm as well. I went about a half an inch in, but you can cut directly on the seam if you want. Now, of course, the bigger the shirt, the bigger the bag is going to be. These are something really fun. Last year during the summer youth program, the kids in that were at my site, we actually um, had them all bring in a t-shirt and we use these on our trips to the pool every week so they could throw their their swimsuit their flip-flops their towel and all that good stuff in it and that way bags at home weren't ruined so once we have our sleeves removed you're going to go in at the neck area and then you're just going to go down and around and this is gonna kind of start looking like um, a t-shirt bag or a Walmart bag. If you can't eyeball it or freehand it, you can always trace it. With the younger kids, it would probably be recommended to draw the line you want them to cut on. And you're gonna set that aside. So that's our shirt so far. Once we have that, you're going to start at the bottom and then you're going to start making slices in the fabric about two inches long. About one inch thick. Doesn't have to be precise. If you're that kind of person that needs to measure it, by all means, grab a ruler. It'd be a great opportunity to teach measuring and um, turn this into a little bit of a science, math, and you know, STEM project for the kiddos. So not only are we creating a project that um, can become a utility, we are also working on fine motor skills with the scissors the small cutting motions, and we are also gonna be working on fine motor skills when it comes to the next step in this process. And that's gonna be tying off.
when we did these at camp last year, I noticed the boys did it one way and the girls did it another. So when it comes to this, it's absolutely preference. When you get to the sides, you're gonna go ahead and slice that up the side too because we're gonna wanna be able to tie that off as well. Okay, and then all you do is set the scissors aside and you grab and you tie it in a knot. Now what I found is that the girls like theirs to hang down low, the boys didn't. So I'm gonna show you the boys way because it has one extra step and then you're just gonna tie these like this all the way down. Depending on the shirt you have, this would be a great opportunity. If you have a dark shirt, you could turn it into a bleach tie-dye. If you have a white shirt like I do, you can do it into like a colorful tie-dye. And did you know you can tie-dye using Sharpie markers and alcohol? That would be a fun opportunity. Let the kids draw on it. Um, I would definitely put a piece of cardboard between the two pieces of, or sides of the shirt and um, let them have a fun time with it. I'm about halfway there. This would also be a really good tote, recyclable, um, reusable tote to um, take to the downtown markets on Saturdays. But think about how much fun the kids would have to go choose their own vegetables from the local farmers and put them in the bags that they make. So I'll hold it up in just a sec. And like I said, it's preference how they want these to look when finished. If you wanted to make it a little fun, you could add some beads to the bottom. We're just for time's sake gonna show you the simplicity of it all. This is how the girls liked it last year because they liked the dangle. Now the boys didn't like the dangle. So then you're just gonna simply flip it inside out. And there you have a no-sew t-shirt tote. We'll see you next time on The Craft Corner.